Park and you're like, I'm gonna warm up with a trick I haven't done in five years, and then it turns into a battle, and then you just want to go home. But that's the game, you know. It's kind of part of uh, part of the fun. I'm gonna go take a nap. Thought I brought a tripod. Thought I brought everything that I needed for today. Naturally, didn't have the the last little topper piece I needed for the tripod. So currently filming on a crate. DIY as always. But today, I wanted to talk about the easiest way to make a freestyle board, right? So as a lot of you know, I ride kind of a specific board for freestyle. The stuff that I do requires just a certain type of board. It just makes tricks easier. It makes certain kinds of footwork tricks more comfortable. It makes tricks like pogos and rail flips and caspers and all kinds of stuff easier. And that partly has to do with the deck, the way the deck is shaped and the way that the concave works. Also, another huge aspect of the freestyle board are the wheels. These wheels are specifically made for freestyle, and I'll go more into that in a minute. If you want to get into freestyle, there's no rule saying that you need a freestyle board, right? Like, you can do most of what I do on a street board or on a, a, a pool board or whatever, a long board even, probably. It's not really about the tool, it's about the person using the tool. But there are some hacks, some very small things you can do to turn a traditional street skateboard into more of a freestyle-friendly board. And that's what I want to show you. While my good friend Andy was in town, he gave me this super slick Johnny Geiger, Johnny Geiger? It's Geiger, right? Yeah, revive board uh, with uh, a certain evil wizard on it. He gave me one of these, and I am actually in the process already of turning it into a sort of freestyle hacked board. You can already tell the deck is a lot bigger than a freestyle board. If you compare it to my shape, it's quite a bit longer. It's about like a quarter inch wider and the wheelbase, the distance between the trucks is a lot longer. But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put skid plates on these boards if you're gonna ride them for freestyle. And the reason I say that is that razor tail kills. Razor tail is what happens when your board starts to wear out. If you've ever had a board for more than like a month, you'll notice that the tail and the nose just get narrower and narrower and narrower and just start to wear down to the point where they're almost razor thin. And uh, if you're a freestyler, it's especially bad because a lot of our tricks are done by pounding on the nose and tail, really banging away at it. And if you have razor tail, the board will start to chip and really fall apart on the ends. What skid plates do, uh, they're really just these little thin pieces of uh, plastic. We actually make them and sell them at Walt Skateboarding. They protect your nose and tail. They just straight up prevent that wear from happening. They're replaceable, they just screw in on the ends. When you're doing footwork, things where you slide your tail on the ground, like spacewalks or different types of thrusters and things like that, these come in handy because not only do they protect your nose and tail, but they also slide a lot better. I already started applying these to the board. Essentially all it took was to line the skid plates up with the deck, mark the, the spots where I wanted to drill the holes. I'll usually use either a screw or a, a nail to mark the holes. And I'll go in with a pilot bit and kind of just drill, drill a pilot hole and then I'll go in with a slightly wider bit and drill out where the hardware are gonna sit. Now all this stuff's available at waltskateboarding.com. All this stuff I'm gonna talk about today, besides the uh, Johnny Geiger board, uh, those are available at the Shred Quarters. Love those guys. I don't really have like, a truck sponsor, or have any kind of preference for trucks. These Thunders are, are pretty solid and they were Thunder Lights, so I picked them up a little while ago for a different project. But these are Thunder 775s uh, on a uh, Revive 8-inch board. And you're probably wondering, Mike, why do you have narrower trucks than the deck? And it wasn't just a coincidence, I'll explain why in just a minute. But the next hack that I think is really important for kind of turning your street setup like this into like a freestyle friendly board, wheels. This is a Johnny Geiger force wheel. This is just a standard like street wheel shape. This is a freestyle wheel. This is uh, actually the one that we make over at Walt Skateboarding. And you'll notice this one looks a little bit wider. It's a little bit different. The main difference is that you can see the bearings are really flush on that side of the wheel. However, look at the other side of the wheel, they're really sunken in. 
they're actually side set bearings. So rather than sitting dead center in the middle of the wheel, both the bearings sit slightly to one side. What that does is it allows your axle to be covered up by this side of the wheel. Drop the wheel on the truck like that, you can see it's basically flush. That's super duper important for freestyle, both for the longevity of your trucks and for the quality of your skating and the ease of doing certain kinds of tricks. If you're doing freestyle tricks, the kind of stuff that I do, you'll probably be doing a lot more tricks on the side of your board. A lot more, you know, rail stands, coconut wheelies, primo slides, stuff like that where you'll be constantly scraping away at the axle. In addition to that, it's gonna be harder to balance and harder to slide and harder to do all those things if it's metal on concrete. But if you have your wheels here and your wheels are what's coming in contact with the ground when you're doing these tricks, it's gonna make these tricks a lot easier. We really love freestyle wheels. It's really a game changer if you're skating really street everything else, street trucks, street deck, if you're not skating skid plates. Freestyle wheels can be a really big positive modifier for your board uh, if you're trying to upgrade to more of a freestyle setup. Plus you can still do like all the grinds you usually do and like jump down stairs and do all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna throw these on and I'll show you why it's important that I have 775 trucks on this eight inch rather than eight inch trucks on the eight inch. All right, so as you can see we have the whole setup done now. Got the wheels on there. Now you'll notice the, the wheels actually stick out quite a bit past the ends of the axles here. They actually add as much as like an eighth of an inch on either side of the truck. So the wheel and truck combination, the entire width of like the wheels, the uh, hanger of the truck and the other wheel is probably about eight inches now. So although the trucks are 7.75, when you add in the width of the wheels, it makes the full setup of the trucks wider. If I had an eight inch truck, and I put these wheels on there, that would make it, what, eight and a quarter or eight and an eighth, depending on how many you know washers or how wide the wheels were. And that would end up making the truck and wheel combo wider than the deck. Now that's good for some things, but when you're doing freestyle and you want the board to feel stable on the side of the board in primos or rail stands, it makes you feel really unstable and gross. So I like to have a narrower truck, 7.75 truck, with freestyle wheels when I ride an eight inch board. Uh, now I'm gonna go and embarrass myself and actually try to skate this now for your viewing pleasure. Uh, let's see if I can do just about anything on this. I suck, but this is Zach, he doesn't suck. He's actually oh. good as heck. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I just met him, he's from North Carolina. Uh, he's gonna show you uh, what real like street skating on a street board looks like. Yep. Or park skating, I guess. Let's try. Yeah, that's all we can do, man. I shoot like tight enough on your feet it almost looks like you're me but then it looks like I can do real street tricks okay. so thank you <laughs> yeah let's change shoes do you think you can do a trick on my uh, my freestyle monster I'll try like maybe like one one park trick or two yeah no pressure okay sick let's do it Best one! Oh, I'm done. <laughs> that was <good. laughs> Best possible way to end it. <laughs> Big thanks to Zach for, for putting in uh, the real street work, the real park etiquette work, where uh, I, I clearly could not. You can follow him at his Instagram account, in the description below. So that was the eight inch board hack. This is like a normal street shape, like I said. I don't think I'll ever really um, prefer anything other than our freestyle shape when it comes to like proper freestyle skateboarding. What we make at Waltz is ideal for the kind of tricks that I do. But 
I understand that people don't always want to jump 100% into freestyle gear. It's a little intimidating, it's a little weird when you're trying to skate other stuff, and that's totally understandable. So if you are ever looking for the stuff you need to hack your board into more of a freestyle friendly setup, don't hesitate to hit me up. Check out waltskateboarding.com for more gear like that. Keep dancing. Make a bunch of trick tips in this tent. I make a bunch of trick. I make a bunch of trick tips on this channel, and uh, try to share as much as I can with you uh, to help you to learn more freestyle stuff and have more fun on your skateboard. And uh, I'll see you next week for another fun little video. Later. So yeah, that's about. That's what it sounds like when the truck is backing up. <laughs>